Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Executive Editor of Dataversity. We'd like to thank you for joining this month's installment of the monthly Dataversity webinar series, CDO Vision. This series is designed to give year-round education on data strategy topics in addition to our annual face-to-face -face event from which we just returned. It was a great event we've already underway for planning next year to be held in Atlanta, Georgia. This month, Joe Madley and Kelly O'Neill will be joined by John Bottega for a CDO interview, a conversation with a recovering CDO, what it's really like from someone who has been there and done that. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. For questions, we'll be collecting them via the Q&A in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Or if you'd like to tweet, we encourage you to share highlights or questions via Twitter using hashtag CDO Vision. If you'd like to chat with us or with each other, we certainly encourage you to do so. Just click the chat icon in the upper right for that feature. And as always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of this session, and additional information requested throughout the webinar. Now, let me introduce our speakers uh, for today. Well-known industry analyst John Ladley is a business technology thought leader and recognized authority in all aspects of enterprise information management with 30 years experience in planning, project management, improving IT organizations and successful implementation of information systems. He is the president and chief delivery officer at First San Francisco Partners. Also joining us is Kelly O'Neill. Kelly is the founder and CEO of First San Francisco Partners, having worked with the software and systems providers key to the formulation of enterprise information management. Kelly has played important roles in many of the groundbreaking initiatives that confirm the value of EIM to the enterprise. Recognizing an unmet need for clear guidance and advice on the intricacies of implementing AIM solutions, she first found its first San Francisco partners in early 2007. And with that, I will turn it over to Kelly to introduce today's guest and to get today's webinar started. Hello and welcome. Hello. Good morning, good afternoon, and uh, good evening to those folks who are on the other side of the pond. So thank you so much for joining us. We're really excited about our uh, interview today and discussing with John Bottega uh, his experience on being a CDO multiple times, in fact, being, uh, I don't know, I, as far as I could tell, the first CDO uh, in in terms of the financial services industry. So just a quick uh, preview of what's coming up in July and August. I know everybody likes to take some time off, but we would love to have you join us shortly after the July 4th weekend to talk about coordinating your data strategies. And then in August, uh, the compelling topic of big data strategies. So we tried to put some of our most compelling uh, webinars during the summer so that you'll continue to join us. All right, well now you have our lovely um, mugs since you don't always get to see us, so now you know what we look like. And let me give you a, big, um, a bit of John's bio. So John Batega is a senior strategy and data management executive with more than 30 years of experience in the industry. Uh, unlike some of us, John, the two Johns are willing to talk about their years of experience. <laughs> Shannon and I always pretend that we're, that we're newbies to this. Anyway, um, over his career, John has held various positions in supporting the firm's data management functions. From 2006 to 2014, John held the title of Chief Data Officer in both the private and public sectors, serving as CDO for Citi and Bank of America, and holding the post of CDO for the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Today, John is the principal and managing member of his own consulting firm, Data Management Advisory Services and is a senior advisor and consultant for the Enterprise Data Management Council, responsible for the Council's CDO Forum and Data Management Best Practices Program. So, John, I think you and I met years ago, maybe it was when you were with Citi, uh, and I was with Cyperion years and years ago, um, but I've had the pleasure and opportunity to work with John in a variety of different capacities over the years. So, welcome, John. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you for the very nice introduction, and, and uh, thank you for having me as part of this uh, webinar. Absolutely. And we have pre-prepared a list of topics and discussion points, uh, just on the very off chance that the audience uh, needs a little bit of momentum to get started. So some of the thoughts that we considered are just around your roles as the CDO, a company's requirement for a CDO to be successful, et cetera. So what we're going to do for uh, this 
I guess, next 55 minutes, is use these questions and discussion topics as guides. And then as people have their own questions, uh, John Ladley will also be monitoring the chat and uh, the discussion forums to make sure that we are uh, interrupting ourselves with your questions. The whole goal is to make sure that we're also getting to your questions as well. And then John Ladley and I can chime in and provide some color also based on our experience uh, in the industry, but most importantly, understanding from John Bottega what is the what what is it really like to be in the trenches? Uh, I guess since ten years ago now, uh, the first yep. role that you had as a chief data officer. So. Mm -hmm. um, with that, I think the other thing that we'll need to do is, is, and maybe it's just for me to clarify whether I'm talking to John B or John L. So <laughs> we'll manage the Johns. Uh, okay. Um, so John Bottega, uh, every time you've had a CDO role, has it been the same or has it been slightly different? Maybe give us some viewpoint on uh, what it's like uh, amongst these different companies. Sure. Thanks, Kelly. Um, let me start off by saying yeah, I believe right now, and, and let me clarify first, um, CDO here, we're talking about the chief data officer. Uh, there's been a, um, um, an effort to steal our, our, our initials and call it the chief digital officer. Uh, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the chief data officer. And to that point, I think it is probably one of the most difficult positions right now in our industry. Um, for a variety of reasons. It isn't clearly defined. Uh, there's a lot of ambiguity in terms of the role and responsibilities of the CDO. Um, it, it is evolving, though. I, you know, I, I say it's difficult, but uh, I wouldn't want to give it up, uh, you know, in many years. I, I, I have enjoyed that role, and now in my role as advisor and working with the EDM Council, I, I really enjoy working with other CDOs around the industry. Because the, the goal here really is to understand our information and use it effectively. So what is it? How is it defined? Where is it located? Ensure its quality and get it out to uh, the end user. And I believe that's the role of the CDO. And now there's scope questions that come into play here. Uh, does the CDO get involved in analytics or business activity or et cetera, et cetera? And I think we're going to talk about that, Kelly, as we go through the questions today and get questions from the people on the call. But to go back to your original question, was it the same? Well, no. Um, my first role as CDO at City, um, you were right. Uh, I think it was the first one in industry. And, and I have to be honest with you, we were kind of inventing the role as we were, as we were going. Mm -hmm. uh, my role at City didn't even have an official HR title. Um, uh, you know, it wasn't even in the in the annals of the title structure there. So we were making it up, and and, and at that time it was probably more focused on operations, uh, cost cutting, and so forth. During the financial crisis and my role during that that period of time at the Federal Reserve, I think the role expanded. Uh, it included certainly working with the Fed. Uh, things related to monetary policy and, and um, making sure that information was available to the, the quants and the economists uh, at, at the Federal Reserve. I also had an opportunity to get involved in some work at the Treasury Department, as you know, Kelly, with the Office of Financial Research and establishing the LEI. So there the role expanded at Bank of America now is at an enterprise level. So I kind of evolved with the role. And there, uh, and, and I, I, I say this with, with – um, uh, I'll say with, with confidence that a chief data officer doesn't manage data. The chief data officer and the role of the data office is a control function which ensures that the rest of the firm manages data. So, so you can see how that role has evolved from hands-on operations to more of a control function. And I think it's, it's going to evolve even more. I think that's a really good point. And in fact, I'm going to ask John L. to chime in here because based on the research that he did, uh, gosh, maybe nine months ago, uh, on the role of a chief data officer, what did you find in your research, John, as you talk to, you know, the, the dozens of companies that you guys talk to? Was it similar? Yeah. Um, um, the, the, the similarity uh, the main similarity with what uh, John uh, was just talking about was everyone has their own unique stamp on it. 
if you wanted to look for the common thread across all the people surveyed, it was that the organization has said, we want somebody to pay attention as part of their dedicated accountability to our data in some aspect. So uh, normally that was uh, um, governance was really big uh, in, in, in a lot of those. Um, many of them, uh, um, if we're gonna get to that in a little bit here, it was uh, some analytics. Um, others, it was uh, um, a productization aspect of, of the data, things like that. Um, the key is, that it, I think the key, the common thread, and the most important thing is, is uh, uh, leadership uh, understands that some, some uh, high level accountability is required to handle some dimension of the data asset. Uh, after that, it becomes, uh, in many, in most cases, I think John might agree with this, that it, it depends on the industry, it depends on a regulatory environment, it depends on the culture of the organization and its business model. Yeah. John, I definitely would agree with that. I've seen it. Um, I'll just give you a quick example. A, a, a colleague of mine who's the chief data officer um, at the Seattle Children's Hospital focuses more on the patient analytic. Uh, you talk about CDOs in finance, the focus has been on compliance and regulation. You get into insurance, it might be more on um, product, you know, uh, creating product for a customer. So I think the specific business case differs, but I think we'll get into where the similarity of the role exists, and I think there has to be some clarity around that as we, as, as, as this evolves. You know, I think it might be good it, rather just to skip down to those questions since that is, since we've kind of started to head there. Um, so which, since you did call it kind of a control function, so it's not the person that manages the data, but that sets the strategy and, and creates that control environment around managing data. So maybe we could get more specific and, and clarify who should or which organizations should report into the chief data officer and uh, why, why not, and which ones should not report in through a chief data officer. Again, in your view and your experience based on what's been successful. Yeah. So, so Kelly, you, you, you mentioned the, the, you know, the question there, should the CDO report to the CIO? And that's, that's an ongoing question. Let me say for the record, I love technology. Uh, I'm a former technologist, or some people say I'm a recovering technologist, uh, and you cannot do anything without technology. Technology is the enabler. But the shift in focus from um, our information being a technology issue to a business issue is what's needed in, in industry right now, and really I think what the role of the CDO does. The CDO's function should be focused on the content of data, it's, it's unambiguous meaning, and it's controlled use throughout the organization. So definition of data, common semantic and definition uh, and, and description, location, access, and then usage. Now, um, the reason why I'm not a fan of the CDO reporting into the CIO is the CIO's function as a technical function has incredible importance, but there's a tendency, and we've seen this in, in the industry, in fact, the EDM Council, Kelly, as you know, ran a survey last year, and there's a shift away from the CDO being under technology. For that reason, it has to be a business function, and has to partner with technology. If you put it into technology, there's a tendency to do things just for technology's sake. The idea is to move it into a COO-type role or ideally being an equal member of the C-suite. We're not there yet. We still sit at the junior table, the kids' table at the C-suite. We're not there yet, but it's best position, in my opinion, uh, to be at a COO type of a level where it has a broad view of all activity because data is systemic. It's not just a technology issue. You know, technology, the capabilities of technology right now are far in, in excess of our ability to manage the asset. We can move data faster, we can store it cheaper, we can, we can protect it, well, to some degree, um, you know, better. But do we understand it? Do we, do we understand its meaning and do we use it? That's the role of the CDO. And to keep it as a 
separate function and partner with technology, that's what I see is the ideal positioning. And we're seeing that in industry. More and more CDOs are coming under the business as opposed to tech. Really good point. And then, again, not to, to totally jump around here, but to focus on this uh, uh, kind of who reports into what, should analytics be part of the responsibility of the CDO? Was it when you were a CDO? And why and why not? Where have you seen it be successful? What are some of the challenges if it does report in there? So, so when, when the CDO role first kind of started to gain some traction, uh, one of the challenges of the CDO was it became the lightning rod for every problem in the firm related to data. And everybody touches data. The real role is to deliver data, trusted, uh, with, with minimal reconciliation, uh, timely, and is fit for purpose. To me, analytics function is an end user. Perfect example was my role at the Federal Reserve. Uh, you know, the, the quants, the analysts, the economists, they are the experts in that space. So they need to uh, function in that role and not spend the majority of their time cleaning the data, which is what you know, the challenge we face, right? Analytics teams are spending more time cleansing than they are doing analytics. That said, the vision of analytics should be within the role and responsibility of the CDO. The CDO should see the role of analytics as a enabler, uh, revenue generator, new product, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, creation, uh, you know, the whole monetization of data, and I, I, I always carefully use that word, uh, but when I mean it from the standpoint of enabling other groups, so whether it's marketing, sales, uh, research, uh, or and then flip it to the what I call the defensive side of data, uh, risk and compliance, these are end users and they're experts in that space. You don't want the CDO or try to find a CDO as an expert in everything, but they should have the vision of how it's used. Yeah, good this, point. And, uh, yeah, go ahead, John. Al. I wanted to just <laughs> to chime in on some of the uh, other um, – uh, uh, this is one of those interesting uh, diversions between one experience and another. Uh, a lot of uh, other CDOs, their entire entry point into CDO hood – what's the right <laughs> word? CDO nets? I don't know um, – yeah, yeah. <laughs> is has been has been analytics. Um, and mm -hmm. it's been strictly an access and delivery uh, 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 item. And then they've kind of backed their way up the supply chain um, uh, when, 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 the, when they finally convince somebody that, you know, just spewing it hither and yon with expensive data scientists is really no solution to all the other problems mm -hmm. you've already experienced with traditional mm -hmm. BI data warehouse. So. So um, it, it's an interesting uh, uh, thing. Um, uh, uh, there is an interesting diversion a lot with this with this role of analytics. Um, mm -hmm. I just wanted to throw that in. Well, John, I, I, I you see if we talk about the the entry point, I would agree with you. It could be driven by analytics, and then a firm will recognize they may not, you know, um, understand where their data assets are. And okay, so we bring a CDO to enable the analytics function. The challenge that I see in that space is, and I've had this happen in my own experience and when talking to clients and so forth is, for example, I, I, I took a call recently, someone said, I want to start a big data program. And I said, well, that's, that's great. Why? Because I read an article about Hadoop. Not a good business case for starting a big data program, okay? <laughs> uh, I, I agree well, with that. That's so my, typical, right? right? Right. So then my question was, well, who manages your data? And the answer was nobody. I said, well, you know, it's great to do analytics and it's great to leverage the new technologies, but there's the boring side of data management, and that is where is it, who owns it, where is it coming from, is it fit for purpose? If, if the entry point is analytics and they fail to recognize the required infrastructure, it will fail or at least it'll produce analytics that are not optimal. Um, now, it may evolve, you know, John, I think you've seen that when you're interviews, and I see it myself, where the role may evolve 
down the road where the CDO has more play in that analytic function, but they cannot, should not ignore the foundational pieces because that's what drives all of the end user activity. Yeah, I think that's a good point in the sense that there's multiple purposes for the role of a chief data officer, and it's not just the analytics consumption side of data. And so is it possible then for the organization to serve multiple masters, if you will, in the sense that if analytics is under the umbrella of the chief data officer, does that mean that analytics gets a priority around uh, the other sorts of operational uses of data? I mean, I think that's one yeah, of the and, pros and cons, and, right? And let, me, let me do a, a, a quick analogy. Uh, my, my brother is head of facilities at one of the banks here in the city, in New York City. Um, as a facilities head, he's responsible for the firm's real estate assets. Okay, so I use the word asset, right? It's, it's something that we use. He is responsible for things like ensuring that the uh, electricity is flowing into the building. So the generators are working, the air conditioning is working, uh, the, the, the engineers are on site to do monthly testing, et cetera, et cetera. He himself is not a, 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 an air conditioning expert. He himself is not a a electrical expert, but he has to produce the infrastructure management-wise and has to be aware of and create the vision for the use of these elements, these assets, throughout the organization. It's akin to a CDO. The CDO should be the visionary for the use of the asset called data and should know enough about analytics and technology and compliance and regulation so that they can work with those experts. You know, if you try to shove all of this expertise into one person, well, first of all, if you can find someone who's an expert in all of it, that'd be great. Uh, it's not me. I, I didn't have that, that expertise in everything that I touched. Um, so I focused on making sure I delivered to the experts. And uh, in, in the case of a chief scientist officer, you know, uh, chief analytics officer, the data scientists are the experts. Now, organizationally, they could report into the CDO if that if there's a if there's a corporate function, but think about it. Would you want marketing analytics reporting in the CDO? I wouldn't want that. I want marketing analytics reporting into marketing, and then my role is to provide information to them. So that's how that's how I see the use of the asset. So I guess that is a good opportunity to actually just move. Well, John, are there questions from the audience? I'm going to take that one as a no. Okay, so let's move on to the second question. So if the CDO is not meant to be an expert in everything, then what infrastructure, resources, personnel, what have you, needs to be in place in order to make the role successful? So what needs to exist within the company um, to make sure that when you hire someone like a CDO and you put them in place, that they're going to be effective when they hit the ground? Uh, the short answer to that is executive support. Got it. I'm less concerned about, you know, what, what the maturity of their infrastructure is or their current data assets and so forth, because the, 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 the objective of delivering data will get there no matter what maturity level you are at in your infrastructure. But if you don't have that executive top of house support, this role will fail. And, and let, let, let's be honest, there's tremendous turnover in this role today. Um, you know, I always, I always compare it akin to the role of the CIO 25, 30 years ago. CIO, you know, the joke is stood for career is over, CIO, career is over. Because they, they, they <laughs> lasted. It, it, you know, they lasted six months, then a year. Then, and today, the CIO is probably the most uh, powerful executive in the C-suite. Um, the CDO, I think, is following that same path. Right now, it's inventing itself. It, it's, it's positioning itself in, in what it needs to do and what value it brings to the firm. But without that executive support, it's really hard to be successful because the CDO is a change agent. You're getting people to change the way they behave, you know, change the way they use and access data. Think about the complexity of legacy systems, application teams. I'm going to build a new database here. I'm going to build something new here. That's a, that's a culture that we've become accustomed to right now. 
let's build, let's build, let's build, and not let's plan. So now that's a change in, in behavior, and that type of change agent is the role of the CDO. As I said in the beginning, I think it's one of the toughest roles out there right now because any change agent role is tough, is difficult. And, and I think that's the, 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 the thing that before you hire a CDO, make sure you've got the right executives that support it, not just one executive, because I've seen that happen where that one executive leaves and the whole program collapses. Mm -hmm. It's got to be driven from top of house. It's got to be collaborative across the executives along with partnership with technology. Those things are the ingredients for a successful CDO role. Can, uh, are you guys hearing me now? Yes, we can hear you now. Yep. Okay, something has gone amiss there. And some, uh, uh, just to uh, our producer, Shannon, some I'm getting text messages on my phone from uh, colleagues that are having trouble getting in still. Um, so there was one question that kind of inter interacts with it that's in the Q&A. Um, uh, you know, what will it take to improve? There is this, uh, the sea change is this cultural issue, John, that you talked about. What, what does it take to improve that cognition or education and, and raise that profile um, uh, of, of, uh, of, you know, formal management and, you know, more planning, uh, uh, m more uh, figuring out what to do with this asset and less just do projects, do projects, do projects? Well, um, let me approach you from two things, what we can control and what we can't control. Um, what we can control is um, uh, the gift of the regulators, uh, and that's regulation. So in finance, let's face it, the driving force over the past five years has been BCBS 239, uh, Dodd-Frank, CCAR, et cetera, and that's elevated the awareness of data management to the executive suite. So, so not that we can control that, but let's say we take advantage of that. It's front and center to executive management, we should be, as a CDO, be conscious of that, aware of it, and be in position to provide some relief. Either it's relief from a regulatory exam or relief in, in uh, uh, ensuring that the infrastructures are in place to support those, those uh, functions. The things that we can't control is the awareness of the executive himself or herself. And, and where I've seen it, uh, data management programs be extremely successful is when you actually hear data management spoken by the executives. You know, in their lexicon, the CEO speaks about the importance of information management. That's when you see it successful. Now, what we can do to help enable that is don't get caught up in the, I'm going to go to the mountain and solve my data problem for three years and, and, and then come back, because you come back and everything is scorched. The idea is you have to be practical. So as a CDO, find that practical niche, that quick win, that proof of concept that demonstrates the value that will be realized through better management of the data asset, and bring that forward. The thing that data folks are really bad at is communication, and, and, and I'll say communicating about their own successes. We're our best kept secret. We don't communicate our successes. We have to be better at that. We have to have channels within our organization that say, you know, we improve, we improve data management for customer data. We now have better insight into customer activity. That's a huge win and things that most firms haven't been able to do. Uh, we've improved the data around our vendors and now we better understand the vendor uh, uh, contracts and the renewal dates and the service provider. Another big win. Those types of things can be achieved in step to show value early, bring in the business to see that there's value in there, and that's where we can actually change the, the, the perspective of data not being something that's just, you know, amorphous and can't get done, but it's real and impacts business. I've heard you talk, and just to kind of pick up on one of the, the points that you made around uh, the, the regulatory, um, I guess, push, I've heard you talk about the BCBS 239 effect and how mm -hmm. that has created an initiative for just about every financial services institution, and I'm sure the same sorts of regulations exist across the other industries as the impetus to drive forward uh, the focus on data and therefore the role of the, the CDO. So, mm -hmm. 
you and Mike, yeah, Mike I mean, Atkins, I, mean, I guess, the BCBS 239 effect. You, you can uh, trademark it. <laughs> well, well, we just observed it. Uh, <laughs> we, 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 the, the regulators deserve the credit for it. And, and, and you know, the regulators, too, look, I, 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 as you said in the beginning, Kelly, and, and I, I, I've stated, I, I worked for the Federal Reserve, uh, some of the most dedicated people I've ever worked for in, in my career, you know, focused on public service. It was really a great pleasure to work with, with those individuals. But they struggled, we struggled with data management as much as the public, as the private sector did. Uh, even more so, if you think about what the regulators are responsible for, they have to pull data from multiple banks and multiple formats across multiple time frames and be able to pull all that data together, aggregate it, and then make judgment calls on the right move for the economy. That's, you know, and the right, right monetary policy. That's, that's almost an impossible task. So, so when, when the regulators kind of got their arms around the financial crisis and saw what was going on and, and recognized, for example, the need for the legal entity identifier, Mm -hmm. uh, it was a public-private partnership effort. It wasn't the reg just going out there saying, you must do this. It was engaging the private sector to say, if we do this, banks, you could manage your risk better. Not, not industry-wide, just you, the bank. And in turn, we can, we collectively, the industry, can manage the health and wellness of the industry better. So that was something that was you know, recognized by the regulators. Regulators have, have come to realize the importance of of uh, the infrastructure of information, the content and definition of information, that's what BCBS speaks of, right? Governance and content definition and data quality. So the regulators right now are using words like taxonomies, ontologies, common meaning, common definition, which, you know, it, it's relatively new if you think about it, but absolutely spot on to what needs to be done. So, so we are, I'll say, uh, blessed with that opportunity because the regulators are on it. But if you go into other industries, I'm hearing the same kind of things in, in healthcare, in pharmaceuticals, in manufacturing, um, the same issues. I, I, I was I, just go off real quick. Um, uh, I was in Chicago this past week and I went to the Museum of, of Science and Industry and there was a whole section on farming. You know, there's not a single tractor built in the United States today that is not internet wired and GPS wired. They collect data about where the tractor actually is on the ground, the soil content, how deep they have to put the seeds in, all data related. And we had a conversation, uh, my colleague Mike Atkin at one point, with folks from John Deere who said, we have all of this equipment out there, but we have to get our data harmonized. Mm -hmm. Same issue. So you can't go to more streams than finance and farming, but it's the same problem across all of them. Yeah, absolutely. And I do think that that's where this, the, the big data question comes in almost naturally is that, is that there is truly this volume of data that never existed before via the Internet of Things, right? So all of these machines mm -hmm. are creating the data, and it just creates a different sort of opportunity and pressure uh, for an organization to manage that data. Um, to me, hence the delineation between the CIO and the CDO, um, mm -hmm. because like you said, not one person can be an expert in it all. Um, and I guess kind of yeah. along those lines, yeah, sorry, go ahead. We can add to that. No, I was, but I was just going to say that's exactly the point. Right. The, 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 the pressure to understand content is ever increasing, mm -hmm. and in partnership with technology, you know, when, when I had the role at, at City, my CIO was was lockstep with me. We 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 went to every meeting together. We spoke to clients together. In fact, clients couldn't tell the difference between you know CDO CIO. We were there to provide solution, mm -hmm. and and you have to have that partnership with with technology. Uh, but but the lack of focus on content definition is really, I think, what set us back a bit caught us on our heels during the financial crisis, and now you've got the regulators that, that recognize the importance of it, and frankly, so does business. Absolutely, absolutely. So I guess if this, the, and I move the slides down to question number five, I guess. So if the CIO and the CDO is truly a partnership, um, how can they make that most successful in terms of clarities of roles? Um, so how would you articulate the delineation between 
what uh, is obviously a chief data officer, but someone that, that has been called the chief information officer. I think it does kind of create a little <laughs> bit of confusion there, right? Well, I, I think it was 2005 I gave a presentation in Rome, Italy, and I said that the, the, the title CIO was stolen. Um, that should be the data person, the chief information officer, and the technology should be called the CTO, chief technology officer. Too late, cat's out of the bag. Technology owns that title. Um, the, 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 look, both both roles have to coexist. Both have to partner. Um, uh, you know, what can we do to better enable that partnership? Um, I think a lot of it is going to fall to the CIO because they're the established role to recognize how important content is and then to partner with the incoming CDO. Uh, you know, the CDOs, we're new to the game, right? We're new to the party. So we can't go in and muscle our way in, you know, first thing in. We have to go in and recognize that there is a hierarchy of responsibility recognize that, that this is a critical function, critical partner. But the CIOs likewise have to say, look, you know, my focus is on the efficient delivery of information, and I'm going to partner with my CDO who's going to define the appropriate definition of the information, and together we'll provide solutions to the business. Uh, you know, it's, it's – um, two people in a room, you know, equates to a disagreement, three people equates to politics. It's what exists in the world today. <laughs> right. So we got to get around that, right? We got to get around that. Um, but that's the way to do it. I mean, you, you know, both of them have to recognize the importance of each other's role and the value of partnership. And so, John Ladley, what have you seen in your travels in terms of this engagement process between the CIO and the CDO and the delineation of responsibility? Well, um, I, I think it's. Oh, I'm sorry. Was that me, John, or the other John? John L. I sorry, I meant to say no. John L., but that's okay. <laughs> no, go ahead, John. You jump in. I'm talking too much. Go ahead. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. Uh, fascinating uh, stuff here. Um, uh, interestingly, well, when I talk to, I, I, I get two really distinct. There isn't much gray. There's either cooperation. Uh, between the CIO and the CDO, as, as John B. described here, um, or um, uh, and it doesn't matter whether one reports to the other or not. That doesn't seem to be um, uh, a corollary. Uh, but there's either cooperation, whether they report to, one reports to the other or not, uh, or or uh, extreme rivalry. Um, and and normally it's the CIO who was there first going, well, gee, that was kind of my job. Um, you, you, you know, all you had to do was let me do my job and we wouldn't have had to have this, you know, joker come in from outside and blah, blah, blah. Um, and, and, and there gets to be a, 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 a bit of friction. Um, I haven't seen, what I haven't seen, that doesn't mean it's not existing. I mean, because there's a whole lot more CDOs than there were even a year ago when we started to do the survey. But um, what I um, uh, what I haven't seen is gray, where they circle each other and and figure out a collaborative mechanism or something like that. Uh, they, they both had, the, 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 what I've seen is they drive the stake in the ground right off the bat and then go from there, um, uh, which is not you know e I, I even you know obviously setting up a rivalry is is not the right way to do it. That that um, uh, uh, really uh, negates. The, the the value proposition uh, of the new role, um, and uh, it shouldn't be allowed to happen. You know, uh, that's I, my criticism there. When that happens, is it's leadership. Leadership should not even allow that to start, and at the first sign of something like that, should should be on it. Uh, sadly, what I've seen is is uh, uh, the direct reports to the CEO just sit back and enjoy the party, which is not. You know, that, that's just not fair to the shareholders or the board of directors or or uh, the employees of the organization. Um, that, that's what I've seen, uh, just to chime in on, on that. I, John, I think it was great that you had the cooperation there uh, initially. You know, sometimes it's an uphill battle. Sometimes it's the other way around. And I, I, I couldn't agree with you more, John, on what you just said. Uh, you know, we're not disparaging any role here. We're just saying that, that, you know, we're stating the fact that the, the reality is there is some competition there. And, and as the role evolves, I think it'll, it'll get better. 
but right now we are faced with that. It's human nature, things, you know, changes in roles people object to. Um, yeah, but, the, yeah, you know, if we were to lay out what's, I was going to say, we were laying what's successful and what's not. It's the collaborative, not not the opposite. Yeah, and the key is, the key there is leadership. The key is not, actually does not rest with the CDO or the CIO. It rests with the uh, structure that's above them uh, to say, mm -hmm. look, we're bringing in this new role. This new role is going to, to a certain extent, kind of intrude upon uh, work that has been traditionally uh, uh, assigned to other people whether it's a CIO or departmental BI or, or wherever, you know, the, the, there is and there is this, uh, you know, it's it's like getting in the middle seat on the airplane. You're going to elbow somebody, right, before you sit down. <laughs> um, and and and, and there you're going to get some looks. Um, but, uh, but leadership needs to see that ahead of time. They need to project that, that, that there will be some discomfort. Uh, it's not that there will or will not. There will be. It's just understand how much and then head it off, uh, you know, intersect it from happening. And and uh, I feel bad for the CIO and the CDO where that, regardless of what their position is on collaboration, where they don't have that air cover or oversight. Right. Was that you sitting next to me on the plane the other, the other week? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a big obnoxious guy, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think it might be a good opportunity to go to some of the questions that we've got now while we're talking about engagement between different roles. Um, there's been some questions that have come up around engagement between data governance and the chief data officer. So, John, I don't know if you want to go through some of those questions, or if not, I'm happy to. No, there, yeah, no, there's no, one right here. Uh, go ahead, John. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead ask the questions. Yeah. Where does data governance of IT processes versus data usage governance land? Is the CDO responsible to ensure governance across both IT and the line of businesses, or does the CIO oversee IT governance and the CDO business governance? Um, and uh, uh, I'm going to let you take a crack at that one first, John, but I also have something to add to that when you're done. Sure, sure. Yeah, and I, I think the answer is, is straight, straight up and simple. The, the role of the CDO is not to govern technology. Uh, the role of the CDO is to be aware of those governance components and actually support those governance components in line with the strategy and objectives of the data management program. For example, uh, it's not the CDO's role, say, to determine what platform the, the, the institution uses, Oracle or, you know, or, or, or Teradata, whatever it might be. But it is the role of the CDO to understand those platforms' functionality and ensure that the functionality satisfies the business requirement. And then when there's an agreement on what that, that platform or tool set or whatever it might be is, the CDO is, is responsible for ensuring that the governance is laid out by the technology teams is adhered to. So uh, not, not the responsibility of, but certainly the support of the, the technology governance function. Okay. Um, I, the one, one thing I'd add to that is, uh, as answer to this person's question, is that don't confuse the word governance um, uh, and its meaning as a sole role. Governance, by its dictionary definition, right, is oversight. Mm -hmm. Uh, of, of and adherence to, you know, ensuring that certain policies and procedures take place. There is IT governance. There's also uh, the governance, a, a CEO. The CEO's job description in the first words is to exercise governance as directed by the board of directors. Um, yeah. as, the, as the, there's governance in human resources. We don't call it that, but there's, you know, you've got HR policies that are uh, in, in force. Governance is in every function in an organization. So data governance would be the oversight over the data. And to your point, John, not technology. There is a, um, a, a CDO that gets IT governance and data governance, and then the CIO has to be all of a sudden subjected to some type of bizarre business-led technology governance. I feel sorry for the CIO now. No, I don't feel sorry for the CDO. <laughs> But, but there um, is some certainly. influence in there, John. There's certainly some influence, say, for example, um, in choosing a, a 
BI tool, a business intelligence tool. Um, the, the selection of the BI tool should satisfy business requirement, but then once the tool is selected, technology governance says, look, this is the platform of use, so you business lines or you whatever can't go out and buy more BI tools at willy-nilly, you have to adhere to that governance. Both of those executives, the CIO and the CDO, should be enforcing those rules. Absolutely. And well, that, that, then that is the role of a corporate leader is that if there is governance of any sort in an organization and you are a duly designated accountable executive and governance is in your job description, then that means you're responsible for, for um, uh, supporting governance type functions and coordinating with all the other governance in the organization. This is where, this is why I wanted to add something. A lot of people act like data governance is something brand new, never been seen before. We're inventing all this wonderful stuff. But if you really look at it as just another form of governance in a new area, mm -hmm. it becomes a whole lot more palatable for the organization. Um, yeah. and, and you get you get that collaboration. You get, oh, well, okay, welcome to the table, another kind of governance, but life goes on. And John, I just add to one one more. I'm sorry, can I just add one more point to that? I, I often think of governance as an ecosystem governance. But right? there's governance around the entire ecosystem within the organization, and that would include uh, everything from technology platform to use of cloud technology to to cross border issues, and and alignment with with security. You know, uh, the CDO should be aligned with the CISO. Right, to mm -hmm. ensure that the right components are done so that you ensure safety of the data. The, the CDO is not going to be responsible for perimeter protection and know all the technology there, but they have to be part of the part of the overall ecosystem to make sure that data is identified and properly tagged and metadata is correct. So it's it's one big ecosystem of governance data is part of. It. Yep. Yep. So then yep. Like kind of explicitly, how would you see the role of the chief data officer and the data governance organization working together? Well, it's one and the same. Uh, I, I, I don't so, separate gov data governance from the CDO office. It's, it's part of the role of the CDO. You know, kind of just what John said, that the CEO says, you know, I have governance responsibility over the corporation. The CDO says I have governance over information, but I might have a uh, data officer who's responsible for the daily implementation of. So it's all in the same function. Got it. So, the, so whoever runs the data governance organization would report into the chief data officer. Should so it's amazingly, a I, I know. Okay. I know a couple of firms that do it separately, uh -huh. and I and I, I I don't agree with that. Uh, I I think the two have to be absolutely lockstep and not two separate functions. But you know, again, we'll see how things evolve. I, I, that's my opinion on it. That data management, data governance are one and the same. So do you see in maybe smaller organizations as they grow that the uh, person, the most senior person involved in governance is a path to being a chief data officer? So I, I, I've had a number of small firms come up to me and ask me about the role and whether they should hire a CDO and so forth. I, my answer often is I, I'd be more concerned about the function and not the person. Is somebody at your firm today focused on information content? Mm -hmm. And oftentimes they say no, right? Um, especially, let's say, buy-side firms, which are smaller, tend to be more nimble. You know, they have to react quickly. They have to do analytics. Uh, there's technology uh, that, that delivers data, but no one's focused on content. Well, then, then, then that function has to be added to their repertoire. And whether that's an existing executive or you, single out somebody as the chief data officer, whatever it might be, the function of CDO, the function of content focus needs to be implemented. So therefore, does every organization need to have a CDO or is there a minimum organization size that would warrant a CDO? Uh, gee, I, you know, I mean, we, we can get chilling, go down to small businesses and <laughs> they need that. Um, I would say if your information, if your organization is highly dependent upon the information flow mm -hmm. and you have a CIO working for you, you should have somebody in your organization focused on content. Uh, that, I think that's, in fact, I'm just thinking about that right now. 
Uh, I think that would be the telltale sign. Mm -hmm. Great. John Ladley, do you have a thought on that? Yeah, um, I, I, get, I get asked that question uh, as well. Um, you know, are we big enough to have a CDO? Sometimes that's a practical question. Is there room um, for another chair at the executive table? Um, and, and uh, you know, there are certain organizational theories that would say yes or no to that. Um, uh, I, I start with what uh, John just said, you know, is there a CIO? If you have a CIO and you are investing in multiple layers of, um, <clears throat> of uh, and, and debating technology use and debating why the guy in marketing has a bigger server than the data warehouse department does and things like that, then you're you're in that realm of of the data asset is beginning to uh, um, show its presence and its weight in other business processes, whether you want it to or not. It is beginning to to uh, tug on you and say, "Hey, someone needs to be here to start to focus on me and solely on me, not as part of someone else's job description." So uh, that would be. It, it, I think. There's, uh, I'm going to kind of play physics teacher here. There's a difference between mass and volume, right, and size and things. And it's not so much size as it is mass. If your organization has a, a certain data mass that uh, is influenced by uh, regulatory or requires regulatory things or has a data mass that, that makes you, um, uh, that affects your ability to perform within your market, within your business environment, or or let's just, that's not, we always focus on business, right, like for profit, but there's, you know, John worked for the Fed. Um, uh, obviously, that is, that is, that business is data, right? Um, that organization is, is, is absolutely data driven. That, then you qualify, you have the mass that says, well, we should consider a top data job of some, of, uh, 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 of some sort. Um, is there a specific formula? You know, I got this much gigabytes and this many people. No, no, it, it's a little more qualitative than that. But but you can, you can. I don't know. We could probably draw a two by two matrix on a board and 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 put some rough parameters on it if you wanted to look at it, but not specific metrics. Yeah, John, I, think John, I spoke to a recent. Uh, I'm sorry, John, I spoke to a recent client that was innovative in the uh, biometric uh, technology. Uh, in, in retail, so fingerprint uh, identification and customer preference and things like that. Real innovative technology. Uh, startup company has grown tenfold in the past two years. And the reason why I was talking is because they're sitting there going, now we have all this data, we don't know how to, how to you know, uh, use it effectively. There's also that aha moment that happens with small firms when they say, gee, we better understand what the content is versus just capturing it through technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or else you're like the crazy cat person with 100 cats. We've got them, but what are you going to yeah. do with them, right? Yeah. yeah. And I think that, that a lot of that is, John Ladley, you said the top data job. I'm not sure if it's so much that it has to have the title of the CDO, but there needs to be some senior level accountability around the, the data, the content, the meaning, all of that. And I think it's similar to, you know, do you need to have a team dedicated to data governance if you're a small organization? It's like, well, you know, you need to have that level of focus. And so whether you have titles uh, that meet different, um, I guess, trends in the industry is not the issue. It's more around accountability for data and uh, data management, data governance, data content, data meaning, versus are you matching these titles that have come up as uh, discussion topics? Kind of how yeah, I would um, mm -hmm. there, there, well, There's a question just came in that if the time we have left, if we could take a minute to answer, it's kind of related to this, and, I, and I'm pretty sure that of the people on this call, they're all thinking this. That question is, if we have data governance team and data stewards, so you've got the data governance function, but you don't have a CDO, can you be successful without uh, the CDO? John? Uh, I, I think it's a challenge. Um, I, 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 there are some banks, believe it or not, even large banks out there right now that 
do not have the CEO role, try and implement governance structure. Uh, part of it will depend on the individual. If the individual is strong and they can move uh, the company, that, that's possible. Um, in some of those cases, the, the governance officer, quote unquote, is actually fulfilling the role of the CDO. Uh, because as yeah. we know, it's not just governance, it's also the content. Look, governance is, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't um, create a society by writing rules. You create a society by coming up with principles. And the principles are around information management. Then you write the rules. So to, to do the rules without the principles and selling the principles, that's a tough slog. Right? Uh, it's tough to get people to word hear. principles again. Yeah. yeah. It's tough I to love get that word principles. I explain it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy you dinner. Now, you're talking principles now. You're my hero. I love, you know, that's, that's such an overlooked, such an overlooked topic. But anyway, I wanted to get that question answered. We've got five or four left here. Kelly, I'll just kick it back to you for some final uh, questions here. I think we've gone through most of the questions. Some of them we have others, but they're similar to what we've already talked about. So I'll kick it back to you here for the uh, last question or two and wrap up. Yeah, so I'd like to go through these last couple of questions. I think this one, it might be fun and funny, but can you tell us, John Bottega, one of the most shocking and unrealistic expectations placed upon you as a CDO? So for those people who are currently in a CDO chair or thinking to be in a CDO chair, what are some of those disaster stories that you want to forewarn them of that is a potential? I was really hoping we would end the, 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 the session without asking me that question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, you know, if it's, if it's too, uh, too company specific, we also don't want to uh, have any liability issues. But I wanted to end no, the, no, the, no, the no. question I, I, with the success. So that's why I wanted to talk I, about the negative things first. <laughs> Well, well, good. I, I can talk about the success, but let me tell you about. It. I guess the most, the most unrealistic expectation of the CDO is time. Um, people expect the CDO to come in on his or her white horse and in six months fix the entire company. And this is, I think, one of the reasons why you see, um, uh, you know, the considerable turnover in this space. This is a, uh, you better dig into the long haul to fix your data infrastructure, especially large firms that have, you know, 10, 15, 20 years of legacy systems. To expect any one individual, especially you know, the, 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 the level that a CDO comes in right now without as much authority as we'd like the CDO to have, to change all that and fix all that in, in, in six months or a year time, it's just unrealistic, and it, it creates, uh, you know, attention and just an unsuccessful environment. Um, firms have to recognize the investment involved. Again, not so much in money, but in time and in, in, in getting people to change. Um, you know, I, I think of my 10 years that I spent in this role, or eight and a half years, uh, I saw more and more what I call projects that left scorch earth behind them because after a year the, the the organization said well sorry you didn't achieve what we wanted you to achieve it's over and they kill the program and and some of that still exists today uh people are getting better at it and smarter at it, but i'd say that's probably the most unrealistic re realistic expectation of cdo is to fix everything you know immediately overnight right exactly so therefore, what was your biggest success? So this is your opportunity to communicate and do the things that we <laughs> talked about earlier. Let's talk about some successes. Well, uh, I, I know I only have a minute or two, but I, I, let, me, let me speak, I guess, more generically uh, about successes. Don't overlook the small wins. Uh, I, I, I'll tell the story real quick. Uh, uh, when I was in the bank and we were doing our um, – uh, back office uh, operations processing, we identified about a dozen to a dozen and a half back office process, trade processing fails due to a bad holiday calendar. Wow. Something so menial and simple. So we took on the role and said, well, let's find out what's going on here. And we found one individual buried away in one of the offices, hand typing in international holidays. Okay, not a good idea. Uh, let's give that guy a, you know, retirement party and send him on his way. 
And all we did was we injected a vendor feed of holiday calendars. Then we followed the path of the data and discovered that there was no governance over those holiday calendar dates. People were changing them in the regions on their own. Oh, boy. And, and, and that came to light when we discovered that Christmas is recognized as a holiday in Hong Kong, but not in mainland China. And they kept switching it back and forth on the same day, which was <laughs> fun. So all we did was we put governance around the content and we put a feed in. It was, you know, literally two weeks worth of work. We received more accolades over that because we brought the number of fails to zero. There were no more fails in the back office due to bad holiday calendars. So don't overlook the small successes. The big ones are great. And, and, and you know, I, I've had some experience in that. We reduced RWA calculations by finding bad data and bringing down the RWA, uh, you know, the, the, the capital reserve and, and bringing more money into the bank. Fantastic. That took a year of time to do. Those are good, too. But, but recognize there are short wins, small successes. Communicate those out there. Then back them up with the longer-term solutions. You want to show value to your employer, uh, to your stockholders, et cetera. That's the way you do it. Well, that's great, John. Thank you so much. Really good advice. I guess back to you, Shannon. Thank you, John, for joining us this month, and thanks to Kelly and John Ladley for another great presentation. Really appreciate it, and thanks to our attendees for being so engaged in everything we do. We always appreciate it. Just a reminder, I will be sending a follow-up email within two business days with links to the slides, the recording of the session, uh, and additional information. And as Kelly has up there on the slides, the next webinar will be July 7th, Coordinating Your Data Strategies, uh, when data management worlds collide, and we hope to see you then. I hope everyone has have a great day, and thank you again. Thank, thank you. you. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye.